Welcome back. 2023, can't believe it. The holidays are behind us. Are you feeling rested and ready for the year? Absolutely. Yeah, I can't so excited about, about the new year and all its challenges. Um, and yeah, this, it's almost as if you uh, build up in a year and uh, keep on building and building and building. And, um, and uh, 2023, certainly, I think post COVID and post all the challenges that's really behind us now, it's going to be a, a, a year of full-on implementation, so really looking forward to that. Yeah, me too. I think we're going to do some awesome work this year. So let's talk about Limpopo uh, National Park. It's one of the biggest parks that we manage, co-manage, um, right next to the Kruger National Park. What are, what are your um, sort of aspirations for that park in 2023? So um, looking forward, uh, Limpopo Park is as. Um, because it's a big park, it's, it's got a lot of challenges um, just because of its scale. So here's a one and a half, 1.1 million hectare park, so that's 11,000 square kilometers. That's about half the size of Kruger National Park. Um, and um, what has happened over the last five years or so is the wildlife population has really increased uh, significantly. So we will measure that in 2023, uh, this year. And, and really try and, and, and get a handle on, on, and on the impacts and achievements of our, of our work. What is also exciting is that we will enter into a new long-term agreement with the government of Mozambique to co-manage the park under a public-private partnership agreement structure. Um, and that is significant because it does um, pave the way for um, a governance mechanism that is very robust um, and hopefully will enable uh, increased investment by tourism and increased uh, support from the donor community. So we're quite looking forward to, uh, to getting that agreement over the line and signing that um, hopefully in, this, in the first quarter of 2023. We, we have a very exciting program that's starting this year uh, called One Limpopo, One Health. And One Limpopo, One Health is about the One Health concept. Um, where we uh, look at ecosystem health, the health of um, wildlife, the health of domestic animals and the health of people in a holistic approach. So the French government, uh, through the French Development Agency, uh, has donated a significant amount of funding and hopefully the, the um, French Development Agency as well, uh, the global uh, French Development Agency as well, um, and it, it really is about fundamentally um, the health of the entire system. So looking after people in the landscape is just as important as looking after the ecosystem and the wildlife. So all things are connected and this program is then for the next five years having a whole team working with the communities around Limpopo National Park and focusing on the One Health concept. So that's very, very exciting. So um, definitely something to look out for, how this program is launched and how it will roll out. Already by the end of 2022, uh, there were over 600 farmers that were part of the Herding for Health program and over 17,000 cattle from six villages that subscribed to the program. And that's completely voluntary. Um, and our human wildlife conflict has dropped to virtually zero, uh, where you, you lost quite a number of cattle uh, historically from predation and, and a lot of conflict and tension as a result. Um, that's virtually gone. So it's a major success story uh, and we really look forward to building on that uh, in 2023. Yeah, and I mean, building relationships with communities is absolutely critical to the su success of conservation. Yeah, I think, you know, we, is, we, um, we say that, but in practice, you can really, if you, if you start doing it, you can really see the difference. Uh, the relationships are cordial, the relationships are positive, the people are positive towards the park um, because they can see real tangible benefits. And it's so difficult to benefit people from wildlife per se or from tourism. But if you invest in people and their livelihoods and their resilience, which, um, and, and, and they can see the link with the park, that's really the winning formula. And if we, 
If we look at the challenges coming towards us with climate change and with population growth um, and with the conflict around natural resources and less water and more sporadic weather patterns with floods and droughts and disease and there's so many challenges heading our way um, that we believe that focusing on coexistence, focusing on ecosystem health, focusing on resilience and livelihoods of people is the future for conservation. So Banin National Park sort of lies between Limpopo and Zanov in that beautiful wildlife corridor that's being used by animals today. Yeah. Elephants and lion and they, you know, they migrate there. Um, and it's a very interesting landscape because we had very different, you have obviously been there many, many times, but I've only been to Banin once, had a very different experience, I think, to your last visit when it was just beautiful, lush, green. It's one of the most, um, one of the most harshest environments I've ever been to. I, it was during the drought. Um, so I remember that um, the, the park manager at the time told me the story of he was driving um, along one of the roads on his way to the park and then he saw two young children walking along the road and he stopped, he had some cool drink in the back. So he gave each of them a can of cool drink. And you know, you kind of expect in that heat, almost 40 degrees, you would expect them to just open it up and immediately get to what's inside. But both kids started licking the outside of the can just to get to the little bit of moisture that's, you know, they don't waste anything. So they first used all the moisture on the outside before opening it up. So that kind of shows you the level of desperation of the people living there, how harsh their lives are. What are we doing to help these people? It's, it's a harsh environment, but it's also, um, it, it's, it has this uh, incredible uh, rejuvenation periods as well, where um, after a year of good rain, which, took, which happened uh, last year, uh, actually people were cut off. They, the rangers couldn't get out of the park because it was inaccessible because of the, 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 um, of the water levels. Um, so after a good year of rain like that, the, the park has these massive pan system and uh, they will have water sometimes for up to seven years after a big rain like that. And it completely transforms the landscape again. Um, and it becomes such an important stopover point for migratory birds. When I was there a couple of months ago, I saw for the first time in my life a wattled crane. Um, and I saw the biggest um, congregation of um, um, spurwing goose. Uh, I've never seen so many spurwing together. Um, I've never seen so many marabous together. So it, it really is this incredible birding paradise, but it does dry up. One thing that I, that I think is we're quite proud of is in our budget for the next five years for the park uh, development, we actually have more money set aside for community development projects outside of the park than, than is being invested inside the park. Now that's quite significant to say. Um, and, the, and the reason for that is, uh, firstly it's a vast landscape, 725,000 hectares, um, and there, there aren't a lot of wildlife at the moment. But if we want to rewild and restock the park, we have to start with the people first. And first look after their needs and, and, and help them with their livelihoods, food security and resilience in, in the face of climate change. Uh, and all of these adversities they face. We're really looking forward to that. Um, we partnered with the Southern African World of College as our um, training partner to engage with communities, to look at governance, governance models, um, and, and really, uh, you know, look if Banin can become a model park where, where you have that coexistence between the people and the wildlife. Um, uh, really illustrative uh, and showcased um, and and if you don't do that uh, Banin is the only place with water um, and all of these people have cattle so so the conflict is going to be there if you don't do it in the right way. Well we look very much looking forward to uh, following this journey following you guys uh, in 2023 and excited to see what comes out of it. Very exciting yeah, <laughs> yeah can't wait. <laughs>